So, I really didn't want to make this video, but I have to make it. The reason the title is the way it is, is because the rational, logical commenters have finally knocked some sense into me, and I'm no longer vegan. So you can thank the incredibly high intellect of the commenters on my page. They've really done a good job at making me see the error in my ways. So anyway, this is my new series. These dumb comments have made me not vegan anymore. I hope you enjoy. So we've got John Brown. I think it's great you're vegan, but if you want to promote veganism, then it would be awesome to get some sun. You look very thin and pale. Is that from your diet? Are you inside all the time? You must be a doctor. You must be a doctor. Like, I'm thin and pale. I'm actually not thin at all. My face is fine, and it just depends on the lighting. If it's dark behind me, and I have a white light on, let me just show you. Just because, here you go. I'm gonna show you. Oh my God. Now I'm yellow. Here, I'm changing it to white light. Now I'm looking all white. Let me add a little yellow. Now I'm back to normal. Like, it's just lighting. And uh, these people, oh, you look thin and pale from your diet. Are you inside all the time? No, mate, mate. I live in England, one. Yes, I'm not thin and pale, two. And uh, where's your photo, John? I want to see what you look like. Let me hyperanalyze you for a second. When I wasn't vegan, I was a fat, out of shape, depressed mess. Okay, eating steak and bacon and eggs and meat burgers and just crap all the time. The only time I felt better was when I started introducing mostly plant-based and then when I went vegan. So, whatever. Real American. Oh man, we got a real American here, just opposed to a fake American. Like, you must be real patriot over here. Stop crying. Did he trigger you? Animals are food. End of story. It's just reality you can't handle, Joey. You're so weak. So we're on a Pierce Morgan video here. Stop crying, did he trick you? Literally just making a response or reaction video as I always have on my YouTube channel. I'm a content creator. I wouldn't want to just sit there like this. Oh yeah, welcome to another video. Of course I'm going to be animated, entertaining and passionate because this is uh, how I get people to even sit through a video. You're obviously watching it. So you might think I'm pretty interesting yourself. Animals are food, end of story. Well, just because you declare that these conscious beings are food doesn't make it so. I'm sure the animals don't believe that they are food. They just want to live and don't want to be tortured, abused and murdered by real Americans like you. It's just a reality you can't handle, Joey. Well, it ain't me who can't handle reality. I face reality every single day and expose reality to meat eaters who like to be kept in the dark. Meat eaters can't handle the reality. That's why they want to hide from reality and don't want to change and instead want to leave little pointless comments on my post from some faceless account. I'm so weak. Actually, I'm not weak. I'm quite strong because I have to put up with your nonsense. VKB. Joey seems very unstable. Oh really mate? Are you a psychologist now are you buddy? VKB? VKB, you seem pretty unstable. You got a weird name with initials in it. You have a faceless account and you go around diagnosing people on the internet. People who make content and reaction videos and you see, well, well mate, Joey's obviously like this in real life. He's really animated in real life. He's very uns... Listen mate, you're not a psychologist. These aren't doctors diagnosing me because of the light, stage light that I use, diagnosing my psychology. Stop crying, did he trigger you? Have a listen to you all. Everyone in the comment section turns into doctors, psychologists, therapists, and meanie faces. So let's keep going. <laughs> Pipto T Ken Who. So, hold up. You place moral value of animals due to their size and weight? That's a dumb argument. Those insects are not farmed, meaning they were wild animals. The animals you are parading for are farmed, meaning someone saw to their birth for a set reason. Those insects were part of the environment. If you're going to choose how sentient animals are based on weight, then that means your value for human life is questionable. Also, comparing poaching endangered species to eating farmed raised meat, come on man. I'm trying to be smart, but if you look up the definition of a straw man, that's what you did here. It had nothing to do with the animal's weight. I was basing my ethics on how sentient an animal is. And some insects, it's even questionable whether they are sentient. Some insects there's more evidence for, like bees. So I'm not sure what you're talking about, bro. If a being doesn't have consciousness, sentience, or much of an experience more than squiggling around on the floor, then they don't have as much moral value as a pig, a cow, or a human being. 
being or an elephant and I thought I made that very clear it had nothing to do with the beings weight also I don't care if the animals are farmed okay if I farmed humans that would not make it ethical I care if the animals have intrinsic value which they do are they conscious, sentient, experiencing the world, and do they value their lives? Also, comparing poaching endangered species to eating farm-raised meat? Come on, man. No, I'm comparing killing animals and killing animals. Eating farm-raised meat. Look at the way you frame your question. Comparing poaching endangered species, adds endangered in there, to eating farm-raised meat. Well, one, you've called them an endangered species. The other, you just called them meat. So you can tell how you view farm animals compared to how you view endangered species. It doesn't matter if a species is endangered, I care about the individual in both cases. So if an animal is raised on a farm, they're still an individual. If an animal is out in nature and they're part of a endangered species, they're still an individual. I care about both the individuals the same, not about their species, not about what they were raised to do for humans. I care about them. The being. So it's totally fine to compare killing animals in a wild context and killing animals in a farmed context, no problems at all. Shane Boxall says, can you change that yellow light so it doesn't make you look like a vegan? At least, Shane, you understand it's a light. You have enough brain cells to understand that it's a light. You're doing better than most, mate, so I'll give you a little bit of kudos for that. On the Jeremy Clarkson video, Lucy says, here we go, Lucy, what's going on? Can someone please explain speciesism? Different animals have different levels of sentience. Therefore, it doesn't strike me as hypocritical to value some over others. For the record, I'm not the biggest fan of Clarkson and some of his other criticism here is valid, but speciesism makes very little sense to me. If sentience doesn't matter, then do we also ban killing insects? What about fauna and wildlife? If something technically being alive is all that matters, that'd require drastic action. Listen, Lucy, let me explain something to you. When you take a pig and you take a dog, the only morally significant difference between those two animals is species. And the way that we treat pigs is raising them on factory farms, gas chambering them to death for bacon. The way that we treat dogs is usually companions. Dogs aren't treated the best in some countries and even in Western countries, but for the most part, they're viewed as companions. And if you abuse a dog, you could be going to prison for animal cruelty. That there, you can clearly see the only differentiating factor is species. Okay, that's a really easy way to measure it. Sentience does matter, and it certainly matters more than our taste buds. If you feel that an animal's sentience does not matter as much as your taste buds, then I would say you're speciesist, because sentience should be enough for you to value these animals more than your taste buds. Now, with killing insects, it's a gray area whether some insects even are sentient. The jury's still out, okay? But other insects, there's more evidence for. So that's why the area is gray. But with a pig and with a cow and with a chicken and with a fish, we can definitively say they are conscious beings having an experience and deserve the right not to be tortured and killed. So speciesism is where you take two animals and one of the animals is being treated in a drastically different way to the other animal and the only difference is species. That's when it is speciesism. Okay, let's keep going. Olsen Julian. God, Olsen, mate, you look red and angry. I hate activists who put animal lives before human. Human lives should come far before food. You wanna be vegan? Be one. Don't push others to that lunacy. Activists are far from putting animals' lives before human lives. We're just asking humans not to stab animals to death for a burger, so we're putting animals before a burger. <laughs> human lives should come far before food. Uh, there's, a, there's so much wrong with that one sentence. Nobody's saying animal lives come before human lives. We're just saying you shouldn't be stabbed to death for a needless meal when you can eat plant foods. Yes, humans need food. We don't need to stab animals for that food. And the animals that are executed certainly don't want to be food. It only makes sense we leave them alone. You want to be a vegan? Be one. Oh, thank you, mate. I was going to be one without your permission, mate, because uh, I don't need your permission to be a vegan. Hey, don't push others to that lunacy. It's not lunacy to want the mass murder of billions of animals to stop. I think it's much more consistent with lunacy to want mass murder of billions of animals every year to continue. I really don't get it. Joey started it nicely around 30 minutes in. You mean 30 seconds in, bro? But then went backwards. Why is he and so many other vegans so certain that killing one animal and eating bits of it for many meals inflicts less harm compared to eating monocrop lentils for this many meals? He specifically justified the crop deaths because in his words, you are not responsible for all those crop deaths since you're only eating a certain amount of calories from that crop. So tell us, Joey, how many lentil monocrop deaths take place per million calories from lentils and how many deaths take place per million calories from pasture raised cows isn't it clear yet that this is a vegan ideology bias mate you're trying to be smart joker which is fine i'm glad you're critically thinking but you're a little bit off here because the cows actually eat food too and you have to factor
factor in the, the crop deaths incurred from raising the cows. So basically, yeah, eating lentils incurs less crop deaths than eating pasture-raised cows. I'm not sure what your point is. There's a graph here. This is the kind of best research there is. I've seen pasture-raised cows eat hay, they eat alfalfa, they eat harvested pre-dough crops. Pasture-raised cows are eating a bunch of harvested grasses and what they consider grasses is many different types of things. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know why if you think you've got a gotcha there, but actually your your comment works against the meat eating position, actually. Hugh Milk, episode one. Red Brian, Joey Carbstrong, you're drinking oat milk that probably came from Europe or here in America and you're trying hard to shut down local Australian farms. You have no idea what is gonna happen if you succeed in everyone becoming vegan. Australia is highly dependent upon horticulture to export and feed humans. Australia is mostly marginal land, which means it's not suitable for commercial monocrops, which means dismantling the horticultural backbone of the country would lead to starvation. <laughs> oh God. That has fried my brain. I had to like analyze what on earth they were trying to say. <sighs> That is the most ridiculous comment I've ever read. So basically, you're saying if we drink oat milk from Europe or in America, Australia won't be able to grow plants to export and feed humans? And then in the next sentence, you're saying, Australia is not suitable for monocrops? What are you talking about, dude? Do you have any idea what you're on about? You're saying Australia is dependent upon horticulture, and then the next sentence, you're saying it's not suitable for monocrops, which is horticulture. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Australia grows many monocrops. Australia grows monocrops to feed the animals there. I don't know if you meant to say animal agriculture to export and feed humans. Either way, your comment is absolutely insane. You really need to be on your wavelength to even understand what you mean. I might be too stupid to understand this. I don't think so. <laughs> I'm dumbfounded. I think that just burnt me out. I, I don't think I can read any more comments after that one. Michael Choate. Veganism equals narcissistic, egotistical, weak ideology cult facts. Animals are food. Facts. Never vegan, always omnivore. Deal with it. He literally is on every single Facebook post. Only reason I'll leave him there is because your comments are so pathetic that they make you kind of look a little bit like not stable yourself. So veganism is narcissistic, absolutely the opposite of narcissism. Narcissism is self-absorption. Veganism is to do with empathy. Egotistical, weak ideology. Egotistical? It's egotistical to think that animals deserve to be in a slaughterhouse so you can eat a piece of their body. Weak. What do you mean by weak? Is strong? to abuse animals? Are you a hero now? Michael, you got one word right, buddy. It is an ideology, but there's plenty of ideologies that are good. Cult, I would say it's much more cultish to abuse animals and eat their body parts and drink their blood and their fear. And have you seen a slaughterhouse? Eating out a slaughterhouse, pretty damn cultish. I think the satanic cults would be pretty happy with slaughterhouses. Facts, yes. Yes, it is facts. Veganism equals an ideology of facts. <laughs> animals are food. They are not food. Animals don't consider themselves food. You might think animals are food, Michael, but you don't give a damn about anyone but yourself. Facts. Never vegan, always omnivore. Deal with it. Oh, wow, Michael, mate. Like, thanks, mate. Like, that was the craziest, most watertight logic I've ever heard. Michael single-handedly is turning me back to eating the dead bodies of innocent beings. Not. Peter... Okay, you freaks, I hunt most of my meat because I can. Hey, like hunters, they always say I hunt my meat. They don't say I shoot to death animals. It's the way they look at the animals, isn't it? You snowflakes would not make it in the wild. Thus adaption, raising animals, that is life. Get over it. Okay, um, snowflake. I don't know who you think is a snowflake, Peter, but I'm definitely the furthest thing from a snowflake buddy would not make it in the wild you probably wouldn't make it in the wild either peter because you're typing this comment on your little phone with your technology i'm not sure what you hunt you meet with mate you probably use some technology so would you make it out in the wild without your little gun and your little phone and your little gps signal and your car and all that stuff i don't know thus adaption raising animals that is life get over it so you're basically saying that we raise animals animal agriculture to make it in the wild is that your uh is that your claim? That without raising animals, we would die? Mass raising animals for food is looking like it's gonna be the end of us as we know it. All of those food and resources going to animal agriculture, billions of animals eating up all our food, water and resources, we're gonna get a big dose of karma really soon. Hopefully Peter's first in line. That is life, get over it. It's not life, it's an infinite mass murder of suffering and death, killing, torture. It's not life, it's horrible, horrible death. 
You have choices and so do the people that eat meat. Thanks to our ability to raise them the way we do, that is reality. You have choices and so do the people that eat other people. You have choices and so do the people that randomly punch strangers in the face. You have choices and so do the people who eat dogs, especially dogs that have been abused first. Thanks to our ability to raise them the way we do, that is a reality. Wow, you, 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 it's, what is this for a comment, dude? What, because we have the ability to raise them the way we do and mass murder them, that is reality. Like, what are you even trying to say? Do you think this is a point, dude? We have the ability to raise them the way that we do, so that is reality, yeah? Do you think you debunk something by saying basically a bunch of words? <laughs> like, Peter, do you read your comment before you leave it? Like, here we go. When they put these animals down, it is only a second. No, it's not, Peter. You are living in a fantasy land, and you say that we can't handle reality. We are snowflakes who can't handle reality. We wouldn't survive in the wild. You don't even know where your meat comes from. Every single minute of slaughterhouse footage I've seen is horrible. Animals go in there terrified. They can smell blood. They don't want to die. They're escaping the knockbox. They don't want to be shot in the head. Pigs in gas chambers is some of the most horrible footage I've ever seen. Those animals are definitely not being put down in a second. What about all the animals that suffer in factory farms? The majority of animals that are eaten, they're not getting put down in a second. They live a life of suffering and then they're murdered in these horrible torture factories. Hunting in the wild, not always that way, but that is life and death. So when you're hunting in the wild, you don't always put them down in a second, do you? Sometimes you shoot them in the neck and they've got blood flying out of their neck and they run away with the arrow still in them. You know very well that hunters chase down defenseless animals, shoot them and often miss, sometimes maim the animals. Hunting to me is the most cowardice thing that human beings do. They do it not because they need to, they're doing it because they want to. Peter does it for a hobby. He goes out, chases down little animals that don't want to die with his gun, shoots them for a hobby. How does that make you feel, Peter? Does it make you feel like a real man, real tough guy? I don't know. Get real. Peter, you're telling me to get real and you think animals get put down in a second in slaughterhouses? You're tripping, dude. You are tripping. The most ironic part of this whole comment is you telling me to get real. There he is, Peter's posted a comment of a deer who's been shot and it looks like there's some blood or something hanging out of their face and he feels like a real man. Hey Peter, did you chase that deer down with your hands like a real wild animal or did you shoot him with a gun? And they taste good. Oh wow, Peter, I'm sure you probably taste good to another creature too. Should we kill you so the other creature can eat you? Vegans, this is what ticks us off. You think you have the moral high ground. Go live off the land and see what you will eat. Peter's act acting like he didn't take this photo on technology and he's not wearing clothes and he's not wearing prescription glasses and a hat and shoes and didn't drive to this hunt in a car and use technology a gun to kill this animal he's acting like he's truly living off the land like aboriginal people or amazonian tribe you are not peter you are using technology you are living in a fantasy land and you keep telling me to get real go live off the land and see what you will eat we're not in a survival situation peter get out of your fantasy they are part of the food chain the lower part, that is, that's why they mass produce. The lower part of the food chain. You're not part of the food chain, Peter. You're not out there as a lion, struggling to survive. You were living in a fantasy land. In nature, most of the chickens will experience a violent death from predators, like a lot of other animals. Get real. You are not in nature, Peter. Chickens usually have a chance to escape in nature. They fly up to a tree and escape predators. At least they have a chance to escape in the wild. I definitely know what's worse for a chicken. It's worse to live in their Frankenstein bodies that they've been selectively bred into and live in a factory farm and then be executed in a slaughterhouse. If you calculated the suffering a chicken has to experience in a factory farm, mate, it's probably a lot worse than living in the wild as a wild jungle fowl that hadn't been selectively bred over years to be in Frankenstein bodies. It's suffering for chickens to even exist in those bodies. Peter, let me just say this to you. You would experience a much more violent death in the wild than the one I'm gonna to give to you. You see, lions in the wild would eat you alive and rip you to shreds. But me, I'm gonna shoot you in the face with a hunting shotgun. And then I'm gonna put you on my barbecue. Do you know why? Because I'm living off the land. Survival of the fittest and you're part of my food chain. I hunt most of my human meat because I can. And I'm adapting to the wild nature from which I was born. Get real. Armando Loreiro, meat is meat and man may eat. He wants me to live on broccoli and carrots and spinach and tomatoes, but I'd rather have cow or chicken leg or rabbit or pig or Dory the fish from Nemo. He just made me hungry for medium rare steak emoji. Armando Lorero, are you a small child? Like I'm talking three to four. Did you take your daddy's phone and start writing silly things on the internet? 
or are you a 40 year old absolute loser who's just written a bunch of emojis on a vegan post? I'm gonna go with the latter. Mate, I don't just eat vegetables, I eat vegan burgers and vegan pizza and vegan pasta and vegan burritos, okay? Whatever I feel like. I also have fruits and vegetables as well because you should or you'll get sick. And I also have uh, oatmeal and beans and all the things that you probably have. I just don't have the bodies of murdered animals or their byproducts. Okay, so that's the first episode of these incredibly logical comments made me ex-vegan. I hope you know that that's satire. I'm vegan for life, but uh, I thought it would be a funny title for this video. And uh, what did you think about the logic that we experienced in this episode? I thought these comments were absolutely groundbreaking, never heard anything like them before. And in the next episode, I'm sure there's much, much worse to come. Peace.